In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to control Cakewalk with a phone. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So I'm sitting here in my studio and I've got a bit of a problem and I wouldn't mind betting that you have the same problem too. Because in my studio, I have two roles. One, I'm the artist and secondly, I'm an engineer. So I'm sitting here up to my desk, ready to record this guitar, but I want all of the controls at my fingertips to record with my DAW Cakewalk. And that presents a few problems. First of all, for an instrument like this, the guitar, I I'd like to have multiple microphones and they need to be positioned correctly and there's really no space here to do that. Second of all, I feel really, really uncomfortable here. As a guitarist, I feel really, really constricted. I feel like I can't move, everything's too close. I wanna be able to relax and just play my instrument. So that is why you want to move away from the computer so that you can find the best sound in the room or even in the house and also really feel comfortable as a play. You're prioritizing performance and sound, but the problem is you can no longer operate your DAW. And that's why you need to use your phone to control it. And I'm gonna show you how to do exactly that in this video. Before we do get stuck into that, if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about future videos. Now let's get controlling Cakewalk with our phone. So the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to download a free piece of software called RTP MIDI. I'll put a link in the description down below. You can click on that and it's gonna bring you to this webpage. Now I must admit it's not the most inspiring looking webpage in the world, but fear not, you won't be here very long. All you have to do here is click on this link at the top right where it says download RTP MIDI. Click on that and let your browser do its work. Now this piece of software is at the core of this solution because what it does is it fools Cakewalk into thinking you've got your phone connected to it via a MIDI cable. Of course, it's a virtual MIDI cable, which you can use over your local LAN network or over your local Wi-Fi network. Now, once that has downloaded, go to the download folder and I'll just zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Here, I'm just gonna right click and I'm going to go to extract all and then just accept the default location, click on extract and it extracts it into this folder which it then opens and I've got this file here RTP MIDI setup exe so I'm going to right click on that run as administrator and start the installation process uh, click on yes here to let it change my device and then we start off here I need to start off by agreeing to the license and terms and conditions and I'm just going to keep everything selected here I'll click on install and let it go ahead now it's going to install a thing called Bonjour Print Services. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I've installed this on a few computers, never had a problem with it. It's always been kind of invisible to me, to be honest with you. So when that comes up, I just click on the next button there. I accept the terms and agreement, license agreement, click on next, next, and install and just let it do its thing automatically. So a really straightforward installation. You just have to follow the default settings all the way through. Hopefully that will be done. Yes, I'll click on finish and then I'll let it continue the rest of its installation. Now, once this has installed, it's a really quick and easy setup as well. And that's the next thing that I'm gonna run through with you. So when you start RTP MIDI for the first time, you're gonna see a screen which looks like this. And this is where we're gonna set up our virtual MIDI cable. And it really only takes a few seconds. So let's go ahead. We'll look under the section here where it says My Sessions, and we're gonna click on the plus button to add a new session. So we'll do that. And it creates a session that gives it a default name. Now yours is gonna be something different. Mine is Studio, um, but I don't wanna use that name. I actually wanna use, uh, let's see, we'll call it V MIDI. You can call it whatever you like and I'm going to copy that um, I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard and I'm going to copy it into where it says bonjour name here with Control V so local name is vmidi and bonjour name is vmidi. As I say, you can call it whatever you like, but it's important to remember what you called it because you're going to need that later. I'll finish off by clicking on enable without changing any other settings, our virtual MIDI cable is now connected. Now we just need to go into Cakewalk and connect up to that MIDI cable. 
So I'm here in Cakewalk with the session open so that I can test this when I've got it all hooked up. And the first thing I need to do is go up the top to edit and click on the edit menu and go down to preferences and click on that. That opens up this dialog box, which I will zoom into so you can see it a bit more clearly. Then I need to go down um, under MIDI and click on devices. Now yours will probably have just a few devices. You may have many like me, but in any case, you want to scroll down and you should find a new device there um, called V MIDI or whatever you called your RTP session. So both for the input and the output section, I'm going to enable uh, uh, the V MIDI connection there. I'll do that and then I'll click on apply window refreshes and then the next thing I need to do is go down a little bit further to control surfaces and I'm going to add a control surface. So a control surface is normally a MIDI connected device which can control your DAW faders, transport, all of that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to add a new one by clicking on this little button up here to add a new controller surface. It brings up this dialog box. Under controller surface I'm going to select Mackie control, that's the bottom one there. For the input port, I'm going to select V MIDI or whatever you named your MIDI port. And then for the output port, I'm going to select V MIDI. I click on OK, I click on Apply, and that's all of the setup done in Cakewalk. So what you can see on the screen now is my Android phone screen. I'll be operating it and you'll be able to see everything I'm doing. So I'm going to start off by going into the Play Store here and right at the top where the search bar is, I'm going to search for Touch Door and you can see it there. So I'll click on that and you can see there's a few options coming up. The very top one is the paid version of the application, which I'll be using. But you can see uh, three down or so, there is the Touch Door demo. So if you're not sure about this, either if it's going to work for you or if you're going to like it or not, then down the demo and give that a go but I've paid for it, it only costs around about six US dollars so super cheap and it's going to save you a whole bunch of hassle so I'll go and click on that and then go ahead and install it on my phone now I'm going to let that install and I'll see you on the other side so I've dragged an icon onto my main screen on my phone for touch door. So I'm just going to click on that touch door icon to start it up for the first time. And the first time you run it, it will have a couple of messages that you don't normally see in future. And we just have to do a little bit of setup to get it to work with Cakewalk. So once it starts for the first time, you get this welcome screen. Just click anyone on the screen to get rid of that. Click again to get rid of that information. And then if you look at the top left hand corner, there's a little menu icon. I'm I'm going to click on that and go to setup. Now the first thing I'm going to do is click on the second option down which is door controller. So I click on that and the very top one there which is called sequencer it's set to Cubase 7.5 at the moment. So I'll click on that. It gives me a choice there and of course I'm going to choose the fifth one down which is cakewalk slash sonar. So it's now set up to use with cakewalk. Now I'm going to go back um, and now another thing you might like to do is look at the appearance. Um, if you look at the fourth option down it says global. So we'll go to global um, and then the top option there UI into interaction I'll click on that and then it's got skin right at the top now it starts off for me with pseudo hardware but it might start off for you with the classic touch door screen which does look quite different if I go back a couple of steps to the screen you'll see it looks something like that I don't really like that look so back into the menu um, to set up and again, I'm going to global appearance, the fourth one down there, uh, UI interaction, and then skin at the top there, and I'll choose pseudo hardware. And that's the kind of look that I like to have for it. Now, if we go back a couple of steps here, you can see the top choice is MIDI ports. So I'll click on MIDI ports there. And where it says uh, port one at the top there, I'm just gonna click on that to set up my MIDI ports. Um, I'm gonna use Wi-Fi, so that's the only choice I have here. So I'll click on OK, and I'm gonna use RTP. I click on OK there. Now, for me, it's automatically connected up to my session because I've actually had it connected before. So um, it automatically sort of remembers some previous uh, settings if you've had it installed on your phone before. Um, for you, it may come up with a choice to detect the connection. And of course, you'll be looking for that connection with the name that we made earlier, which was VMIDI or whatever name that you gave the connection earlier. Anyway, I'll click on OK. Now let's go ahead and test it out in Cakewalk. 
So I should mention that I like to restart the app after I've done those settings. I've installed this on a few different phones and I found that when you change the settings, uh, you can get some odd results if you just try and use them right away. So I shut down the app and as you can see, I'm back to my home screen here again. I've got RTP up and running. I've got Cakewalk up and running with those settings. And now I'm gonna start Touch Door with the new settings that I created there. And what it should do is just automatically connect up to the connection we made earlier and it's gonna start communicating with Cakewalk right away. So here it goes and it's in there and yet a few things flick around and we can see right away that it appears to be connected. So I'm going to click the play button that you can see just in the sort of right top area of my uh, phone screen. I'll click on play. And indeed, we start to see the song play in Cakewalk as well. Now, I really like to use this in landscape mode. So I'm actually just going to turn my phone around now. It looks a bit odd on the screen. So I'll go to a different view so you can see the whole thing. And now you can see it in landscape mode. And you can see the menu. There's a little bit small, the menu button, but just kind of at the top and on the left, I'll click on the menu button and I'm going to go to transport controls because this is the view that I find really, really useful when I'm actually tracking. Say I've got my guitar all set up, all the microphones are set up and everything. I've armed my track and then I can just go ahead and use the, uh, the controls here. So I haven't actually I'm going to track at the moment, but you can see I can play it from here. Um, I can stop it. I can scrub through using the scrub reel, which I'll do there all the way to the beginning again um, and all that good stuff. There's quite a few features to explore in here. Um, I'll go to the menu again. I'll go to mixer. So you can do a little bit of mixing while you're in there as well. You can use the faders here. You can't see my faders on Cakewalk at the moment, but that's really, really handy if you fancy having faders on your fingertips um, rather than using a mouse on your screen. Lots and lots of good stuff to explore, but mainly I must admit I use this transport view so that I can remove remotely control my DAW, this one being Cakewalk, while I'm actually away from my computer. So I really do hope that this video was useful to you. Now if you've got any questions whatsoever, then please do ask in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to help you out. Now if you did like this video, you can help me out by hitting the like button. First of all, that lets me know that you did like the video and second of all, it lets YouTube know that it should show this video to other people. If you didn't like this video, then do hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos and I will see you in the next video.